And what about you? And on the ramp today we have a Ford Focus Mark II. And uh, yeah, it's been in here before. And what we did before, and there's a video on the channel of it, is, uh, let me see, get you under here. We did those uh, bushings up in there on the front of the trail arms. So those bushings are there to get on. But now the punter wants all the rest of them done. So we're going to do a wee bit more than that. Uh, we're going to actually replace all these arms and all these links. That one there as well. So yeah, so there's, there's the main sort of thing there. If we can get that in there. So we're going to do all the bushings, but at the same time, I'm going to be dropping, I'm just going to drop this whole subframe out because it's just a bit crusty. Here and there, so uh, we're gonna deck it up for a wee bit, give it a bit of wire brush and rust remover on it, and uh, a bit of paint and stuff. We'll maybe uh, address that there up in there too while we're at it. So we're basically gonna take the whole back end out. So we had this thing in before for the uh, foremost bushings on the rear. I took basically every bolt out or loosened most bolts, but I didn't touch that one and it didn't touch that one. And deliberately so, because I did say in that video, these bolts here can be a problem. These things can seize in. But uh, now we're gonna have to take them out. So anywho, this is what we're gonna, this is what we'll have. The old melee. So, melee kit. What have I got in here? So, new arms. New, these arms, these arms, all the bolts, including uh, yeah, the camber bolts. There's the camber bolts. There. And uh, you don't get those in these kits, but uh, they are melee. Yeah, are they roll bar bushes? So he's going to get every bush changed as a result so those bushes there are pretty perished in this car and the other thing that happens with these motors whatever all these bushings go uh you mightn't be able to see it it mightn't come up very well but you tend to get negative camber on the rear wheels so the top the top of the wheel sort of goes in towards the body, you know. Now clearly this is on the ramp and these are hanging, but you can maybe see it there. Bit of negative camber on that rear wheel there. So that's what tends to happen, the wheels fall in, especially when they're loaded. Okay, so done a wee bit there when you weren't looking. So that's the handbrake. Discoed, that's uh, not a bad wee job there. Disconnect the handbrake. So you can screw in a couple of screws here. Very good, take the drum off. Hold the lever forward with a screwdriver and uh, you need to pick up, let me see, pick up that wee tab there, just locks that in. And you can disconnect that wee screw there, that'll be the handbrake cable off this trail there. Brake hose disconnected there, good job. And uh, we'll probably end up, I think I'll just replace these because it's just getting a wee bit, uh, a wee bit crusty around the, around the end of it there. But anyway. Could reuse it. So I'm gonna take this uh, whole assembly out in three pieces. And uh, with the springs removed, anti roll bar links off. And the idea of that is, uh, so there's no tension on this, on this bolt. So it sits a good bit straighter now. With uh, no spring acting down on it. And uh, yeah, so, these bolts here, that bolt there, and that bolt there, I haven't had them out of this uh, car before. Uh, the other bolts there, that one there, and uh, that one, and a few other ones, one at the top there. I've already had those out when I did the front bushing, so I know they're grand, but I'm expecting this to give me a wee bit of hassle. 
So yeah, so I'm gonna take the two trailing arms, drop them two off, and uh, then drop the subframe. So take it out in three pieces. You could take it out completely all as one unit, but uh, I think it's easier to do it this way. Now let's see now, are you gonna be nice? Well, that was a pleasant surprise. That bolt coming out. They're normally seized. I wonder if these camber bolts come out. It's just as nicely. Might be lucky. Just saw it. We'll give her a, a thump here. Let's see if this is going to move. So let's give it a good whack there. And move the wee bit. Don't saw it. Let's see now. Anything? Right, I'm going to hate the living bejesus out of this bolt.
Okay, so that's a two I'm out now. Uh, I didn't show all what was going on there, really, you know. So what I was doing was I was getting heat on this side and getting heat on here as well. So we're trying to get the heat to conduct down the bolt because this is the area here where it's stuck with the, the red there. So you're trying to free that up and uh, yeah, with the heat. So the other thing, you may have noticed that I rattled the uh, nut on, first of all, but I changed the impact because you want to get you want to get the nut as far down as close to the you know the area that's seized as possible. So you don't want the nut to be just on a couple of threads. It's just gonna it's just gonna bounce. And the other thing you may have noticed with uh, the air hammer there, uh, you know I, t I put my hand my other hand onto the subframe to hold it. So you you know you want to keep uh, keep your weight on it. So you don't want it to bounce. That thing there is on the Amazon store. That's a 401, one of these jobbies with a hacks on it, so you can put a spanner on it for turning. But see, it's the only one that I've ever seen with a, a hog ring on it that holds your socket. You know, the majority of them don't have that. And uh, you get a spare one of those, and a wee, a wee rubber. Goes underneath it as well. It's underneath the hog ring. So, yeah, that there is, uh, you're probably not gonna see it, I can hardly read it here. Um, made in USA. So that thing there is on the Amazon store. It's about 10 to 15 quid, something like that. And uh, it has had a bit, of, a bit of bait in there. And it does rack your socket. So just use an old socket with it. And with the rest of all the bolts out, they were dead on because I had them out before. This will just drop out, hopefully. Shocker. I think it just makes it more manageable for me to take this out basically in three pieces because these trailer arms, we've already done the bushing as we've said, so we're not going to do anything with these at all, I'm not going to touch it. So we'll get the other side done and then get the subframe out. And that's our subframe ready to come out. Just uh, we point the note, there's a bolt up in there. If you were changing these arms, you know, without taking these, this subframe out, that bolt up in there is a bit tight to get at, you know. So there's the other side of it there. But because uh, we're dropping the frame out, it shouldn't be a no big deal to us. So here's our frame, and uh, there's where we're pounding there. So that's survived. I think if I had done that with a bigger impact, I have a big nasty. I would have just bent that. So that's why I didn't use that. So yeah, she is a bit crusty here and there, but uh, yeah. But it really, it would have been better if I was able to get this shot blast, but that's not an option. So we're just sort of decking it up and uh, that's really all we're about it's uh it is salvageable i'm happy enough with it you know it's sort of you know the bit that you can't see you know is gonna is gonna be the worst bit right here you know so yeah and uh well i've said a couple of times i think i'm taking this out in three pieces and when I'm saying that, I mean, you know, this major component here and, you know, those two, I'm not really counting those two. I'm not counting the springs, you know, I'm not counting the arms here, you know what I mean? So three pieces is that, that, and that. And there we go. It's amazing what a drop of paint can do. And uh, a few new arms. So you can buy those arms uh, separately from uh, Melee. You don't have to buy that whole kit. And if you do buy them separately, you get you know, all the bolts with uh, you know, thread locker and all that. So you get the accessories. Even if you buy them separately, channel isn't 
anything to do with uh, melee parts at all. I just uh, think that it's good stuff and that's what I tend to use if I can get it. So yeah, this is just, um, it's just enamel paint. Put on with a brush, that's it. So I reckon uh, that'll give this frame a bit, of, a bit more life uh, and extend the life of this car as well because judging by the state of it, it, uh, it was brave and crusty all in round the wee nooks and crannies and all, you know, so uh, if that had been left, that frame wouldn't have been uh, too long more for this world. We pin there, so it's pretty much self-aligning. So that's a bit of a gift. So we'll get as many uh, accessories here on as possible and we'll get her in and that's us. And we've wire brushed a leaf out of under here where the arms bolt up onto. And uh, well, it looked a lot worse than what it was. It's good and solid. And that blue stuff is the uh, rust converter. And uh, two coats of that. And we'll get a drop of paint on her. Yeah, that's our refurbished subframe in. So this isn't a restoration. This is just a, a refurbishment here. You know, so some people might say, eh, you should have powder coated that and all that there. Eh, stay on, you do that if you want. But uh, a lot of the restoration guys, uh, they don't go for powder coating because it chips, you know? But anyway, those bolts, they're tightened to good and tight newton meters. No idea the torque spec. Actually, see up in there, that's, that's actually where they tend to rust. They tend to, that's where they rot out. These frames are the ones that I've seen. And uh, we did the same to the roll bar as well there. So that's the original on the roll bar. New bushings and uh, yeah, tend to get the arms in and they're gonna go up in there in that hole there, which is spruced up as well. Here's what we want for you. To get these all lined up here, put that in a right height position. I'm just using the lifting table to do that. So there's no springs in at the minute. Get you under here. So our lower swinging arms aren't in yet. But uh, if you have that hoofed up, shutter bolt is loose. You know, these arms just, they just go in like that. There's no, no fading or nothing like that. So you want, you sort of want these bushings up in here to be parallel with the, uh, the floor. So, you're not wrestling with it. Makes it easy. We'll get plenty of sneeze on this bolt. We'll get her in. There we go. With the front foremost bushings tightened up, the only two that's tightened up, obviously the, the subframe main bolts are tight as you can get them and uh, well, anything between it pertaining to the arms here, these new arms, uh, there's not these knees on them and uh, they're loose, shoulders loose and I've lifted her up a right bit, you'll see how far this is up and that means that this will line up without doing any wrestling. So I'm not one for wrestling with suspension components. You know, we bit too long in the tooth for that. Carry on. So, you know. And with our camber washer in, making sure that we don't crush any of these wee, uh, these wee spuds on the frame. So, that's what's gonna adjust here. You can see uh, that's more or less horizontal there for that to go in nicely. Brakes connected, handbrake connected, ABS wire connected, just a spring to put in there. Just about fits in there with the shock absorber still attached. A bit of adjustment required to get her seated properly. Mm 
let's have a wee look at what we've got here. Nice gauges on it. So we're making reference to the front. What's that say? About six. All right. Okay. That's only a number. Yeah, you know, it doesn't refer to degrees or anything. Yeah. And this one here is three and a half. Lovely. So right. Okay. So we need to just equalize those two numbers. You know. Sort of add them together and divide it by two type of thing. And we have excessive two in there, so we want them to be near enough zero. A wee tiny wee taste of two ends, fine. But uh, more or less zero. Oh, there's more or less zero. So we'll put a wee bit of adjustment in these. Okay, so I've set her roughly, first of all, with uh, the bolt still loose and uh, then I'll tighten the bolts up. So we're sitting about four and a half there. And uh, the other side is the same. So as long as they're equal, she'll drive straight, you know? And uh, we'll have a wee smidge and a toe in. So we're, we're pretty much within spec, but uh, we are making reference to the front wheels, which are probably out, but uh, it's probably good enough and uh you know maybe rack on mend and alignment after you know the car's driven a wee bit and the suspension settles so you go out on the obligatory test drive and uh we'll see how this thing drives and if i do say so myself it's driving pretty straight and uh yeah i'm pretty happy with that. i think the punter will be as well i don't think it'd be bothering with a with an alignment it's a pretty good deed it's perfectly acceptable anyway for me so we'll get this uh up a few country roads and uh get over a few get over a few bumps and stuff and turn this corner and uh yeah so the guy wants to keep hold on to this car he wants to keep this car for a number of years and uh whenever we did the front pushings on it he saw the video and uh he saw the state of the underneath it, so he wanted this done as a result. Now, brave bit of work on that, and uh, I wouldn't normally do that for, well, most people anyway. It, uh, the guy's a regular customer, so, and uh, he looks after me as well, so he always he always has something for me in the, in the, uh, in the car. In this case, a box of gloves. So, there you go. Anywho, uh, yeah, I think the reason why he likes this car, 55.8 MPG, it says there, it's a 1.6 TDCI, common real diesel, Peugeot engine, and uh, yeah, nearly 56 mil a gallon, 177.523 miles on, 177.5 thousand miles, so yeah, rear subframe, I've seen them uh, on these Mark IIs, uh, top of the spring mount, completely rotted out, that's it, scrap and uh well certainly a subframe anyway but yeah front subframe fine on this car uh front some seat frames seem to be okay on these it's the rears is the problem it seems to be a lot of i don't know moisture chops or something the way it's designed but anyway waffled off for long enough okay car's driving great many thanks for watching all the best and